This is a demo of the production tools used in Blown Apart. So what is Blown Apart? Well, Blown Apart is an independent animated comedy series uh, created by myself and Yubzanda. The way we make the show is uh, in Blender, which is what this whole demo is about. We're called Tiny Media, but really from the production side, it's just me and Yub. So I'm more on the technology side, backgrounds, 3D modeling, and Yoop is more on the design and animation side. So for example, Yoop designed and animated all these characters. I rigged them and created these custom add-ons that we're about to talk about now. Let's start off with the first like fundamental thing about Blown Apart is that we use these 2D grease pencil cutout characters, but they're placed inside a 3D space. So I have here this big old stage, this wall is used to separate the lighting, and I have a nice little background uh, elements over here and then we have our characters over here. Some alternative versions of our characters are hiding uh, below the stage and they'll get popped up when they when they are needed. So that's what the stage looks like. So some other fun stuff. How did we do the like little background elements? So when Napoleon starts singing his song it's just a simple light and a spinning plane to create these shadows behind him and then and this flag element is just a render of a super quick cloth simulation now i'm going to demo how we do the sequencer workflow we can now play and we can see you just we have the whole episode sitting right in here uh, the one limitation of this system is that so for things like this we're not actually switching into a different scene i've just made clever little places where I placed other background elements that we could do the uh, whatever we needed to do. So for example, if we just wanted to edit the characters, all I'd have to do is turn on some of the some of the elements here and just pop into a character and then I can sort of like grab his hands and for example, start adjusting the position here. If I needed him to be in a different pose, I can come in here and just start adjusting that. And that's all within this sequencer area, so I can pop back in here. And again, I need to make some edit or something, and I can do that. One other thing about the sequencer that's really great is allowing us to control and update the cameras and edit you know, while we're working. So I can grab, let's say, this camera right here, and I could move it over so that we stay on Beethoven for longer. Or maybe that's probably not a great idea because I don't want to lose the animation. And I can go the other way. And we can just sort of tweak that until we find what we want. So that's how the sequencer stuff works. It's just, you can just drag around and uh, and hop to a different part of the, uh, of the edit. So now would be a good time to go into the strip tools. So the first thing here is, uh, this guy is the actual ways to control the scene. So I have a selection follows playhead, so every time you jump to a different strip, that strip becomes the active strip, just so it's easier to control. And I have here the camera names. So let's say for this shot I want to switch it to a wide, I could just come in here, select a wide shot, and there we go, now it's updated. I have now here the render settings, so if I wanted to render just a small section, I can set some uh, preview range, and then uh, hit this render button to render it in matcap or render here the full render in Eevee. Okay, next up is the rotate to strip camera feature. So if you uh, look closely at the left screen, you'll notice that as I move around here, like this is a very good example. So as I move around, Napoleon and Beethoven and all the other characters will actually twist. Right, so now they're all facing sort of this direction off the screen right. Before they're, you know, they're all facing right towards camera, uh, or to, at least towards this perspective. But if you're looking through this camera on the right, you're always seeing something correct. There's someone missing in the background there, but whatever. So, right, this is how the rotate to strip camera works. And the way I would enable it is I would just go onto each character. Right, so let's say I have Napoleon selected there, and then I'm just right, just enabling this button right here. And then after I've enabled it, I just have to jog the scene a little bit. So if I just go like, doo -doo, and now you see he is updating. 
Okay, and finally we have line art. So let's jump to the beginning. Now there's a really, really annoying problem with line art right now, which is that it doesn't render from the perspective of the sequencer. So the first thing is that I had to make my own like camera that you copy and paste all the strip cameras down to this camera when you want to render. Uh, it's not great, but it's a workaround. Okay, so I have these little viewport buttons here. I have them because line art's a little bit slow uh, when you're looking at it through the viewport, but I have two objects. So one, if I open this guy up, controls the line art for the foreground, and the other guy controls the line art for, it might take a second, the background, because those buildings back there are actually 3D buildings, uh, like I mentioned before. So uh, to work with the line art, what I can do is we can enable it, and I just now can quickly adjust the thickness of the line art for this one shot, and then I can actually have it be keyframed from shot to shot. So the next shot, I like to try and maintain a thickness that is relatively similar to what the characters look like. So maybe this one should come down a bit. And uh, that's it. The way I wrote the add-on is that it's, it's only keyframing on the first key of each uh, strip, so it's really, really easy. And uh, yeah, and now I have the same control for the background. So I'll just turn on just the background. And if I wanted to make this like crazy thick, I could write 50. And ta-da. Now, the one thing you have to be worried about when you do this line art stuff is that depending on if you're using world space or screen space, you will get funky results in screen space sometimes because uh, the viewport will never reflect uh, what you're rendering unless you perfectly zoom in your viewport so that the, the size of your viewport is the exact resolution that you intend to render. So that's also kind of annoying, but whatever. It's not the end of the world. Um, I'm, all, I'm actually thinking about releasing a different add-on that will just help you with that, which is called Line Art Tools. Uh, it just has a couple extra things to make it easier to work with the liner. Okay, and finally, uh, tiny status. This is just a really, really simple one where, like, for example, that was disabled. It was because there was a missing linked file. It wasn't uh, set to relative. So you just click that button, it sets it. Uh, same thing, render path settings, just setting the right settings for uh, uh, combined in Z, which is what you need for grease pencil. And then uh, just checking for er any errors, double checking all the images are packed. It's just a little collaboration button to make sure that uh, all the collaboration needs are met. And that's the entire demo. So thanks so much for watching all the way till the end and definitely check out Blown Apart.